Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second day of Venice Japan International Food Plus Symposium, organized with the kind collaboration of the Consulate General of Japan in Milan, Case Pro Incorporation, and Kafoskari University Foundation. Let's start with today's first panel. I am honored to introduce you the next relator, His Excellency Mr. Giorgio Starace, Ambassador of Italy to Japan. Previously, Italy's ambassador to United Arab Emirates and special envoy of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooper Cooperation of Italy for Libya. Today he is going to give his talk about challenges and opportunities for the Italian agri-food sector in Japan. Good afternoon, Ambassador Starace. Please, thank you. Good, good evening from, to everyone from, uh, from Tokyo. Uh, it is a great honor uh, for me to participate today to the Venice uh, Japan International Food Symposium, uh, a very, very interesting initiative. Uh, and uh, I'm very much looking forward uh, to speaking and discussing with such a prestigious audience on the agri-food uh, sector that is central key for the presence of Italy in this very important market. It is uh, an initiative co-sponsored by the Kafuskari University, the Kafuskari very, very prestigious University of Venice and the Consulate General in Japan. First of all, allow me to thank uh, the organizer, the Japanese consul, Mr. Yuji Amamiya, the representative of the academic and communication world, together with the many businesses, federations, and the companies that are following us today. Allow me to express my great appreciation to the rector of the University of Venice, Kafuskari, presidents of the homonymous foundation, Tiziana Lipiello, for the valuable contribution given to the strengthening of the cultural relation, friendship and collaboration between Italy and Japan. Allow me to make a little parenthesis. Kafuskari is on board uh, on a very ambitious initiative that we launch uh, from uh, Japan. We are uh, giving a new strength to the uh, Institute for Oriental Studies of Italy in Kyoto, and Kafuskari is, of course, a protagonist of uh, this important initiative that we strongly supported. Thank you again, uh, 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 Madame Tiziana Lipiello, for all your help. Japan represents to us a strategic political partner. Uh, it is an important protagonist of uh, the international arena and uh, a very important political partner of Italy. We have established uh, a sound and long lasting collaboration in several contests of the international bilateral uh, relations uh, with, uh, with, with Japan. And Italy and Japan can count on strong ties and on consolidated bilateral partnerships based upon key priority sectors from innovations to disaster preventions, from uh, political to economic to cultural and uh, other uh, sectors. Furthermore, considering the economic and commercial side, this country is also an important market for Italy in terms of size and in terms of opportunities, taking into account both its strategic geographical position and the level of uh, the domestic demand that is very, very, very wide. Uh, this evening, uh, we have uh, an important also event. We are going to have uh, political consultations uh, by phone, a first important uh, uh, consultation between our two prime ministers, Prime Minister Draghi and Prime Minister Suga. So this is a, a, a process that continues and continue to, to get deeper and deeper, a fantastic, important friendship in, uh, in growth. I would like to underscore that Japan is the country where 
Italian exports recorded the best performance in recent, in recent years. For this reason, I am particularly proud to share with you the positive results of the Italian system in Japan, even in a period full of challenges and, and uncertainties. In such a critical scenario, we are determined to face all the issues ahead with great energy, but with very, very sound and strong optimism. The Japanese market has confirmed its importance, in particular for the Italian companies in the agri-food sector, despite the current crisis. Also, thanks to the comprehensive tariff liberalization and benefits provided by the economic partnership agreement between Europe and Japan, EPA, concluded and signed on the 1st of February uh, and entered into force on the 1st of February, 2019. I recall that thanks to the agreement to the EPA, our export, uh, uh, the exports of Italy to Japan increased by 20% in 2019, according to the data of our National Institute for Statistics, and reached the record figure, figures of 10 billion euros. I am talking about all the exports. Export of Italian agri-food products in the first year of application of the agreement, so we are talking about the year 2019, increased by 11.8%, reaching the value of 961 million euros, so practically almost 1 billion euros. Among all the member states of the European Union, Italy stands out for the greater utilization of the preferences accorded by the agreement. We have in fact exported out of the 10 billion euros that in 2019 entered in, in, in Japan, 3 billion euros of merchandises that are machineries, fashion, agro-food, uh, pharmaceutical and many other things, 3 billion euros in value of goods to the Jap Japanese market entered through the EPA preferential tariff. And so we can say, that Italy has been uh, uh, the EU country with the highest value of good potentially liberal, liberalized by the agreement. We really took very good advantage of this, uh, of this uh, uh, agreement so far. The assessment of the positive impact of the EPA on uh, our exports to Japan confirms and rewards the important works work that the government and the Italian system have carried out uh, during the negotiation to protect, to, to protect and enhance our economic interest. In this re respect, the commitment of the Embassy of Italy has been paramount in monitoring the full implementation and correct application of the EPA in close collaboration with the Italian and the European institutions involved. To this, to this end, we launched and will continue in the coming months a series of special workshops and seminars to inform Italian companies and Japanese importers about the potential of the Japanese market and on the benefits of the EPA, of the agreement. We have intensified the promotion of our high quality agri-food products, also with reference to the promotion of the Mediterranean diet and to the products safeguarded as protected geographical indications. This promotional action has been characterized by special events and initiatives, realized in particular in the context of the Italian Cuisine Week and also to the important campaign called Aperitivo all'Italiana, with the active participation of many restaurants, many bars, uh, and of Italian cuisine throughout Japan. We can really rely on uh, great allies here in Japan. Uh, the Italian restaurants, uh, the Italian bars, the, 
the, way, the Italian way of, of life, of eating, of uh, having aperitives is growing, is growing, is growing, and is invading uh, this fantastic archipelago. The action of the embassy in synergy, in synergy with the private and public institution of the Italian system have had the aim of enhancing a better knowledge of our agri-food culture via innovative promotional campaign on the social networks and also uh, on, its, uh, on all the other digital uh, uh, platforms and means. We especially wanted to stress that the Italian products are the results of a production model that respects the integrity of the territory and reflects the cultural identity and values with a sustainable use of environmental resources. Over the last edition of the Italian Cuisine Week, we have been overwhelmed by the growing interest and great passion of the Japanese public for the Italian high quality food and wine tradition. The success happens also thanks to the participation of re relevant representative of the best Japanese tradition who have become the main ambassador and point of reference between the culinary culture of the two countries. In addition to what I just mentioned, I am very pleased to highlight that more and more often and with the growing success, the main Japanese groups in the Horeka sector and the large scale distribution organize Italian fairs. On such occasions, they use huge spaces in the most prestigious location to promote Italian food and wine along with other Italian fashion and design products. In this regard, I briefly recall the important collaboration with Hankyu Corporation in Osaka and Prince Hotel Italian Fair throughout Japan. Despite the pandemic, we never stopped to back the Italian product production, production system. We will strengthen our support and double our promotional action in the year 2021. I am very, very glad that last week, from the 9th to the 12th of March, the important fair Foodex Japan 2021 was held in Japan. Foodex represents the number one exhibition of the agri-food sector in Asia, in, it, in which we participated with a, an Italian pavilion of more than 1,200 square meters uh, ahead of South Korea, France, and the United States. It was the first pavilion in terms of dimension uh, with, uh, in, the, in the fair with more than 100 companies, particip Italian companies participation, participating. We had all the Japanese importers that were present in the stalls and were uh, receiving the buyers. Uh, of course, we could not have the producers like in the past editions, but this uh, system did work. And uh, uh, there was great satisfaction for the presence of thousands and thousands of uh, Japanese buyers in the Italian pavilion. This growing appreciation combined with the said benefits of the EU-Japan EPA, which I would like to underline once again, has guaranteed the most important liberalization to the agri-food sector helps, uh, helps us uh, to be optimistic about the perspective of the full recovery of the Italian-Japanese commercial dynamics, very positive for us in recent years. In 2020, we all had to deal with the unexpected outbreak of the pandemic, which caused a general contraction of trade flows on a global scale in addition to a number of social and health problems. Unfortunately, also the performance of our exports to Japan registered a decrease. The trend of the Italian exports in 2020 was consequently not brilliant as 2019. According to the data provided by the Japanese Ministry of Finance, in 2020, 
Italian export to Japan about 9 billion 200,000, uh, 9 billion 200 million, 9 billion 200 uh, million euros. So 9.2 million billion, 9.2 billion euros uh, had a decrease uh, of uh, minus a drop of minus 11.4 percent compared to the same data of 2019. We exported to Japan market in 2020 1 billion and 174 million euros less than the previous year. Japanese exports to our country also went down, uh, a drop of uh, minus 19.6% in value, decreasing over 4 billion euros in 2019 to 3.3 billion in 2020. And overall, the Italy-Japan trade exchange contracted by 13.7%. Nonetheless, Italy still confirms as Italian, as uh, Italy is still uh, the second EU supplier of Japan after Germany and ahead of France. Based on the data of this Ministry of Finance, the decline of export figures of the European Union stood at uh, minus 12.9% in the terrible year 2020. I told, uh, I just mentioned that uh, uh, we had a, a, a drop of, Italy had a drop of 11.4%, so better than the average of the European Union. And so, an, a similar negative trend uh, also affected uh, the main part, uh, European partners of Japan with Germany minus 16.8%, France minus 24.8%, in Spain, minus 9.4%. I will not touch upon the details of the export performance of the other main Italian productive sectors, but I will briefly mention the figures of the exports of the Italian agri-food industry, which recorded overall a decrease of minus 7%, so less than the average 11%, some of the leading sector have suffered significant decrease, uh, such as uh, cured meats and meat products, minus 30.8%, cheese and dairy products, minus 16.1%, and wine and spirits, minus 15.3%. Despite the global economic downturn, our country managed to increase the exports of pasta, by 21%, 21.4, which is an incredible result, considering that this happened in, uh, in the uh, very difficult year 2020. And uh, we also registered an increase of the exports of uh, chocolate-based confectionery products, plus 7.6%, and vegetable preparation, ready-made sauces, and tomato sauces, plus 7.3%. In this crucial phase, the embassy has continued its efforts to favor the consolidation of our commercial presence on this very important market, ensuring continued support for Italian companies through sector, sectoral and thematic webinars and uh, with specific video conference. Today, more than ever, we are ready to listen to all the stances of national stakeholders in order to facilitate the full recovery of the economic and commercial relation between our respective industrial and productive systems. With this in mind, I hope that in the coming months, the international sanitary and health conditions will improve and allow a greater opening of the borders as an embassy, we are ready to help our company to size all the opportunity also in the post-emergency perspective. We hope that businesses, business travels can resume and contribute to strengthen existing strong ties, creating new partnership between Italy and Japanese companies. I am sure that the next general assembly of the Italy-Japan business group scheduled for next May in Venice 
can give up, can give us new impetus in this regard. With renewed momentum, we will continue to pursue the priority objective of strengthening dialogue and economic trade relation, consolidating bilateral cooperation with Japan, also on the international stage. It is a crucial moment. Japan is determined to host uh, the Olympics. I am very sure that uh, Japan will have great success and that we show the world that uh, uh, we can prevail together uh, in the fight against the pandemic. Uh, from this experience, we will see a very solid growth of the partnership, uh, overall partnership, political, cultural, economical, technological between Italy and Japan. I thank you, all of you for, for your attention. And uh, I wish uh, a great success to this uh, important initiative. Again, thank you very much to the prestigious Kafoskari of Venice, to all the team involved, and to the Consulate General of Japan, all the academics that are involved and the businessmen that are uh, listening uh, uh, us. Thank you very much. Grazie. Thank you very much for your remarkable presentation, Ambassador Starace. Thank you very much. Grazie. Grazie. So if someone has any questions, please make use of the chat here below. May I just ask one question? I have got one question for the Ambassador, if possible. Um, well, do you think there is a particular target with which Italian food is more successful in Japan, for example, in the youth um, range of uh, consumers? Yes, Japan is, uh, is becoming uh, uh, a very mature market, also in the, in the field of uh, agri-food. Uh, um, Japanese consumers are discovering new, uh, new uh, products uh, that are produced in, in Italy and are more and more interested in also in uh, our tradition of uh, uh, our cultural tradition of our territories. Uh, I am mentioning uh, you the fact that uh, out of uh, the tradition, uh, the traditional flow of pasta, of uh, wines that now are growing very much because uh, don't forget that one of the first results of the EPA was uh, introducing a zero level of tariff per bottle. So basically the bo Italian bottles and French bottles and European bottles are entering into this market at zero tariff, which is an incredible uh, result compared to the, to the past years, where this, can, this market was dominated by the very cheap uh, uh, Australian and Latin American wines. So now in, 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 in Japan, you can find so many productions and varieties of Italian and also French wines, of course. Uh, but uh, I would like to mention the fact that uh, the Italian tradition is now growing uh, and there is a great inter greater interest in sectors that uh, were quite unknown in the past. One of uh, not very surprising, but uh, uh, confirmed uh, sector that is growing very much is the one of uh, chocolate and uh, anything that is sweets and biscuits uh, and the, the great tradition of our, of our companies. No doubt that uh, within the European Union, the Italian production uh, in, in this field is among the best in terms of uh, uh, the genuinity of, uh, of the ingredients, because the Italian market is one of the markets where there is the largest control on quality in the European Union by the authorities. And the, the, there is also a very, very strong demand in terms of tasting by the consumers. Japanese consumers are meeting this, uh, these requirements and uh, are growing very much also on very innovative sectors. Other, of course, another uh, important discovery by the Japanese is the, that uh, 
uh, in spite of, uh, of the tradition uh, uh, they discovered cheese through the French, now they are uh, discovering that uh, the Italian varieties of cheese is immense uh, as the variety of wines, because our country is a country of uh, a mosaic of territories uh, producing uh, a, a very wide, uh, large varieties of, uh, of products, uh, this in terms of wines, this in terms of cheeses. Another sector that we are uh, strongly pushing uh, and where uh, there is an interesting uh, trend in Japan, uh, benefiting us, but also our uh, Spanish and uh, French friends and Greek friends are extra virgin olive oil where you really can, again, find the consumers that are appreciating more and more this, uh, these productions. And then let's don't uh, underestimate the uh, very big perspectives that are opened to the big tradition of uh, frozen uh, products uh, uh, of, uh, of Italy, uh, that is uh, by far one of the best worldwide in terms of genuinity and and, and, and taste. So also there, there is a requirement, uh, particularly in the so-called online trade. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I have a question to Ambassador. Yesterday, uh, we had a discussion on um, how Italian products were more well received by the older generation. And the younger generation tend to like more street food and they're more inclined to like um, Korean culture or pop culture from other places. Uh, do you see that tendency that uh, in the Japanese market that um, Italian products are well received by the older generation? And also, um, why is that? And uh, what can you do to penetrate um, the younger generation's market in Japan? This is a very good question, uh, Nanako. Uh, that is uh, uh, the target, uh, there, is a, there is a clear analysis in Rome on how to uh, work on, on new generations in terms of taste uh, and of uh, offer of products. Um, and this is affecting uh, uh, this market, but also other markets. Um, I would not be so drastic in saying that uh, uh, only mature people are very much going after, um, after the Italian products because there is a very large part of intermediate uh, um, generation following strongly the Italian cuisine, talking about people between 30 and 50 years old, particularly women, uh, very, very keen, very, they are also the driving force uh, generally of uh, trends in, uh, in the big cities of Japan, uh, because uh, uh, women are very much in the cafeterias, very much in the restaurants, they really know what is new and what is uh, uh, in entering into the market, and they very much taste uh, the new products. Um, we, we are, uh, for example, if you take the case of uh, uh, the sparkling wines, the reason for which we introduced uh, uh, this uh, Aperitivo Italiano initiatives was to bypass the old idea that uh, the Italian sparklings are in competition with champagne. Uh, our idea is that the market of the Italian sparkling is the is in Japan the market of aperitivo all'italiana. So it is a market surely not for mature people, but for people that are younger and have a more dynamic uh, life and probably less time also to take advantage, but uh, are very happy to uh, socialize. This is a little bit the, 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 the message. Of course, our strategies that were very strong in the year 2019 with a number of bars that we covered uh, in the great Tokyo with uh, a gigantic uh, effort of Aperitivo Italiano stopped because of COVID. But we, we would like to restart again. 
So the, the other point that is very much in the focus of uh, the Italian strategy is to work also on everything that is the so-called street, Italian street food, that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the typical street food that the Italian youngster eat uh, in the Italian cities. Uh, like, for example, la pizza al taglio, so the sliced pizza that is very fast, that is uh, the Italian response to the to the uh, fat, to the American fast food and uh, uh, arancini, all this kind of uh, of uh, street food uh, we are trying to promote because this is really something that could meet the requirement of the youngsters in the gigantic metropolis of Japan. Thank you. Sorry, I will have to leave because I have to go to the this inauguration of this uh, uh, of this exhibition here at the Italian Bunka Kaikan, where we are practically doing a, a first anticipation of the Italian uh, design day with uh, everything that is concerning design architecture. And so uh, we are having the, uh, an exhibition of Citterio, that is a very famous brand uh, that we that is present in, in Japan, but uh, that is now introducing new new things, new concepts, and new models. Arigato gozaimashita a tutti quanti. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today, Ambassador. Arrivederci. Thank you. Arrivederci. Grazie. Grazie infinite a lei. Grazie mille. Ambassador Stonek, thank you very much. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you. Mille il consul. Yes, consul general of Japan. I recognize your value of effort. Always. Thank you very much. I really hope that the relation will be strengthened again once the uh, COVID pandemic is ceases. Thank you very much. I wish you a very every success and health. Thank you.